So chapter 10 is alkynes and addition reactions. So in previous chapter, we talked about the reactions of alkenes. So this chapter is pretty similar to what we discussed before. All right. So alkyne is a carbon-carbon triple bond. Right? So we have three bonds between the carbon-carbon. Right? So that's your alkyne. That's your functional group alkyne. Right? And compared to alkene, alkene has one double bond. Right? Okay, we have two double bonds. And alkane has okay, one sigma bond. So one sigma bond, one sigma, one pi bond, and one sigma and two pi bonds. So how do you read it? Okay. Alkane has one sigma bond, right? So that's your sigma bond. Okay. Alkene has one sigma and one pi. So this has one sigma and one pi. All right. Now alkyne has one sigma, so it has one sigma bond and two pi bond. All right, so how do I know how many sigmas and how many pi bonds I have? First bond is always sigma, and all the multiple bonds are pi bonds, right? So here one sigma, one pi. Here one sigma and the remaining twos are pi bonds, right? So since we have two pi bonds, right? So one pi bond or one double bond equals to one degree of unsaturation. That means if you have two pi bonds, okay, that means you have two degrees of unsaturation. Right? So since in this chapter we are only talking about al alkynes, let's focus on alkynes here. Right? So alkynes can be two different types. Right? You can have terminal alkyne and internal alkyne. So terminal alkyne, <coughs> excuse me, this is on at the end of the chain. Right? So that's your carbon chain. So terminal is at the end of the chain or the beginning depends on how you look at. An internal alkyne is within the chain or inside the chain. So this is your carbon one, right? Or this carbon one. So you can see the internal alkyne has two carbons on each side, right? Here, you start with the triple bond, right? So again, your alkyne is a carbon-carbon triple bond, right? So you have how many carbons here? There's a carbon right here, there's a carbon here. And those two carbons has the triple bond, and then you have the additional carbon here. Here, that's your carbon, that's your carbon, that's where your triple bond is, and then you have the two additional carbons here. All right, so if you're looking after hydrogens, right, if you have to find out how many hydrogens we have, right, so this carbon has how many bonds here? One, two, three, that means there should be one hydrogen, okay? This carbon has all the four bonds, so there should not be any hydrogen, and this carbon has one bond, that means, you should have three hydrogens on this one. Okay, that's, that's how you find out how many hydrogens you have on the chain, right? So this will be a CH3. This carbon should not have any hydrogens because you are, it all, already has the four bonds, right? This carbon already has the four bonds, so it should not have any hydrogen, and that should be a CH3, right? So again, just to summarize this, make sure when it comes to alk alkyne, that carbon-carbon triple bond or the triple bond is between the two carbons. All right? So don't forget, and if it's a terminal alkyne, then you also have a hydrogen attached to that carbon. Okay, that's your carbon number one. All right? So let's look at the reactions of alkynes. So alkynes have similar reactions, what we saw in case of alkenes. So we have a triple bond, right? <clears throat> And we have the addition of HX, so X can be HCl or Br, let's say X equals to, can be chlorine or bromine. All right. <clears throat> so you can do the addition of HCl, right? And that's hydrohalogenation. Then we can do hydration, we have H2O and H2SO4. That's your hydration, and the third reaction is hydroboration. So if you remember, we talked sim pretty similar reactions in case of alkenes. So in this chapter, if you learned what we discussed before, if you know it very well, then this should be pretty easy for you because all the concepts are pretty similar. The only exception we have to make here that a triple bond is made up of two double bonds. That means a triple bond basically means two alkenes. Okay? You have a double bond and a double bond. So in this case, we can just do the same thing, but we have to do it twice, all right? Such as this, we're doing the addition of HX. So we're doing addition of HX and HX. Okay, so just two times. All right, since we are doing the addition two times, we will need 
two equivalents of Hx. Right. So what we do next, we will break down each and every reactions. Uh, we will learn in detail. Okay, let's see how the mechanism works for this. Thing. So let's look at the first reaction, which is hydrohalogenation. Right. So hydrohalogenation. So where we are adding the H and Cl. Right. So same way when you have the two carbons. Right. So this is let's say carbon one and carbon two. So which carbon gets the hydrogen and which carbon gets the chlorine? Okay, how do we decide that? Okay, we apply the Markovnikov's rule. So what Markovnikov has said that the carbon that has the most number of hydrogens, right? So carbon one and two, which carbon has the most number of hydrogens? That's carbon two. Will get the hydrogen. So automatically, carbon one will get the chlorine. And how do we show with the mechanism? Double bond is your base, right? So that's your electron pair. So base will go pick up the hydrogen, and that electron pair will go on chlorine. Right, so B minus and H A. So carbon two gets the hydrogen, and carbon will get the plus charge so because we are moving the double bond like this. So we are taking electrons away from carbon one, so that will get the plus charge. Right? And what you lost here is Cl minus. So Cl minus can go ahead and form the bond with the plus charge. Positive and negative has to come together. Right, so. <clears throat> we get our product. So this is your carbon one and carbon two. We still keep them highlighted. So we keep track which is carbon one and carbon two. Right? So we did the first addition of HCl, but we still have a double bond left. So we still have an alkene left. That means it should be able to react one more time. Right? That's why we need HCl two equivalents. So we can react it one time and then we can also react it second time here. So we have H and Cl, right? Again, the double bond can attack and do the acid-base reaction, right? So this is your carbon one and carbon two. So carbon two has a hydrogen. The new hydrogen also has to go on carbon two because that's the carbon that has most number of hydrogens. Here, no hydrogens. Here, we have two hydrogens now, right? So your new hydrogen has to go on carbon two right here. and automatically the plus charge will go on carbon one. So let's put plus charge on carbon one, right? And the Cl minus last here again can come back and attack carbon one to get you the product, right? So this is your carbon one and carbon two. Carbon one should have two chlorines now and carbon two should have two hydrogens, right? So carbon one and carbon two. So if you don't want to write it like this, you can simply write it like this. Because we assume that this carbon has three hydrogens already on it. So that's your CH3 carbon right there. All right? Or you could write it like this. Either way is fine. All right? Because we don't write hydrogens every time. Okay? But I wrote it down just to make sure that you keep track of those hydrogens. Right? So we start with one hydrogen here. Okay? So there's one hydrogen already there. Right? Then we add another hydrogen, right? and then we add another hydrogen. So that's why this carbon 2 has three hydrogens here. All right? That's your CH3 right there. So before we jump on to second reaction, which is hydration, we need to learn an important concept. Okay? That's called ketoenol thodomers. All right? So let's see, you haven't heard this term before. So let's spend some time and find out what it is. All right? So enol is coming from ene is alkene with alcohol, right? So you have an alkene with alcohol, OH. That's where the term coming from, and that is enol. So alkene and alcohol together, that's enol. And keto is basically ketone. So that's where the keto coming from, All right? So <clears throat> the problem here is anytime you have an enol in your reaction, okay, enol is not stable. So the moment you get an enol, it will automatically change to keto. So that's a proper process, and you will learn the whole process in organic too. But for now, as long as you can keep in mind that anytime you have an enol, it will automatically change to keto. Okay. So how do you figure out keto and enol? Right. So if you have an enol, right. So that's your alkene, your carbon-carbon double bond with an alcohol. And if I want to make it a keto, then basically you just flip the double bond 
between carbon and oxygen, right? So that's what, right? So I flip the double bond between carbon and oxygen. So carbon oxygen double bond is keto. That's a ketone functional group. <clears throat> and when you have alcohol attached to the same double bond, all right? That's your enol. All right. So there's one carbon common between these two, all right? So that's carbon is right here in the middle, right? That carbon is common, okay? So that's the that's where the double bond is flipping, right? So double bond flips here, okay? That's your carbon right there. So you just turn a double bond between carbon and oxygen, that makes it your keto. All right. <clears throat> so what will be the keto for this? So that's your carbon. Okay. That's where you flip the double bond, right? So flipping double bond between carbon and oxygen will make it a keto. So that should be the keto form of that. <clears throat> All right. In this case, you're looking at this carbon right here. All right. So you had to flip towards right. That's where the carbon oxygen bond is, right? So if I flip the double bond between carbon and oxygen, that will be the keto form of that, all right? So anytime you have an enol, okay, it will automatically will change to a keto because keto is the most stable form of it, okay? And there's a proper mechanism, mechanism for that, how it happens, okay? And there's a separate chapter in organic 2 based on this. So we'll learn everything in detail in organic 2. But for now, <clears throat> just, just learn how to flip between keto and enol. Right? So enol will change to keto. All right. All right. So next reaction is hydration. Okay. So if you remember, in case of alkenes, we actually use H2O and H2SO4. Okay. So when you mix H2O and H2SO4 together, it's, it's an acid-base reaction. Right? So what you get is the hydronium ion, right? So this is the most important in species that what we get, okay? And that hydronium ion then reacts with your alkene, okay? So in this case, we have alkyne, but very similar, right? So your double bond will go and pick up the hydrogen, right? So simple acid base. So you have carbon one and carbon two, all right? So just to highlight those two carbons, right? So carbon two should get the hydrogen, right? So in this case, we are only using one double bond at one time, right? <clears throat> and carbon one will get the plus charge, right? What you lost here is H2O. All right? So what's gonna happen next? H2O will go and attack, right? So negative positive has to go and attack. So in this case, carbon one will get the H2 and carbon two will have the hydrogen, right? So that will stay the way it is, right? So anytime you have a positive charge, it's not a stable product. So somebody has to come and pick up this hydrogen and that has to be a base. And we have a base in the reaction. Remember the base we created, the conjugate base. So base can go pick up the hydrogen. So this will go pick up the hydrogen and that will leave the electron pair back to oxygen and that will form the first product, okay? So what we have here is, if I ignore this hydrogen on carbon two here, that's how it will look like, all right? So what happens here now <clears throat> is we form an OH, okay, on carbon one. And if you take a look at carefully, if we if you pay attention, then you have actually alcohol with alkene. So that's an enol. Okay. And the moment you have an enol in your reaction, it will automatically change to a keto. So basically, you have a carbon, which is common between these two. And the double bond will flip between carbon and oxygen, and that will get you the product. So that should be your product. All right. Or you can write it like this. Okay, so that's your keto. So the moment you have an enol, it will automatically change to keto. So in this case, we are not adding water twice. Okay, we only add water one time. Okay, <clears throat> like unlike previous condition, right? When we had HCl, we did HCl two times. But in this case, we don't do it two times. It's only one time. Okay, so first acid base, then water will come and attack carbon one, right? Then you neutralize the charge using the base. But after, right after this, what you get is your enol, 
and that will automatically change to a keto. Okay, so after changing keto, we cannot do any reaction further with, with water because we don't have a carbon carbon double bond left here. Remember, enol changes to keto and there's no alkene left here. And since there's no alkene left, we cannot do any further reaction. So the reaction will stop here at the keto. So next reaction is hydroboration, right? So hydroboration goes hand in hand with hydration, right? So that's your hydration reaction and this is hydroboration, right? So hydration and this is our hydroboration. So we just saw the hydration reaction. So let's let's do a good comparison here, right? So in case of hydration, what happens if you just don't want to if you just want to write down the product? In this case, we are not worried about the mechanism, right? So if you just want to write down the product, then H will go on. So you have H and OH. So H will go on carbon two, and OH will go on carbon one, right? So if I had to write carbon one and carbon two right here, right? So H goes on carbon two, and OH goes on carbon one, right? So that's your one and two. But that's your enol, and enol will automatically change to your keto, right? So that's your <coughs> keto, right? Well, if you write it down properly, that's your keto right here. That's your keto form. So that's your actual product, right? So how do you change the story when you do the hydroboration, right? So if you remember, when we do hydroboration, it is anti-Markovnikov's hydration, right? So in case of hydration, we are going with Markovnikov's rule. What Markovnikov has said, that hydrogen will go to the carbon that has the most number of hydrogens, right? So hydrogen has to go on carbon two. That means the OH will go on carbon one. If I wanna go anti-Markovnikov's, okay, which is the hydroboration, then you swap the position of H and OH. So in this case, what I'll do is I'll just write down it like this. So that's your carbon one and carbon two, right? So carbon one will get the hydrogen and carbon two will get the OH. Remember, the, you still have your one double bond left behind. Right? So that's your carbon one and carbon two, right? <clears throat> so what we got here then, again, we have an enol. So double bond with alcohol, so alkene alcohol, right, enol. And enol cannot stay as enol, so it will change to a keto. So what's the keto form of this? double bond will flip between carbon and oxygen. Right? So that should be the product in this case. All right, so that's your keto form of it. And that's the enol form. All right, so just to, <clears throat> just to revise one more time, what we're doing here is we're doing the exact same thing as we did in case of hydration. Right? The only difference is when you do hydroboration, we switch the position of hydrogen and alcohol because we are going anti-Markovnikov this way, right? And then once you get the enol, then you change into a keto. Okay, so every time you have an enol, that's not a stable product. You have to change it to keto because that's your real product. Enol is not your product, okay? Because enol is not stable, so it will automatically change to keto. All right, next section is acid-base reactions of terminal alkyne. You remember us, we have two different types of alkynes. One was internal and one was terminal. Okay. And these reactions are only true for terminal alkyne. So what is a terminal alkyne? Okay. Alkyne which is at the beginning of the chain, right? So the chain starts with an alkyne, right? <clears throat> so here, that carbon actually, we're interested in this carbon right here. That carbon has a hydrogen, right? And based on your experience, can I call this hydrogen as acetic hydrogen? Okay, so that's acetic. Why is acetic? Because that carbon right here, that is sp carbon, right? And if you have an sp carbon, that hydrogen is, that makes it a strong acid. Remember, hybridization effect, sp3, sp2, and sp. So sp makes it a strong acid, right? That means if I throw a base here, if I throw a base, that base can go pick up a hydrogen, okay, and that electron can go back on the carbon right here. So that will get you a negative charge on that carbon right here, because that's your 
conjugate base and then you have your HB. Right, so that's your conjugate base and conjugate acid. Right, it's a simple acid base reaction. Why we are using this as an acid? Because it has a hydrogen attached to SP carbon and that makes it a strong acid. So if I throw a base, that will be happy to pick up the hydrogen, right? So that will easily give away hydrogen. Base will, base will pick up the hydrogen and that will create a negative charge on this carbon. All right. Now, why is important? Because the moment you have a carbon with a negative charge, all right, we can use this as a nucleophile. Okay. A nucleophile means we can do substitution reactions with this. All right. So in the last chapter, which is synthesis, we will actually make use of these reactions extensively where we can do acid-base reaction and then we can use this negative charge or carbon with a negative charge as a nucleophile. So we can do substitution SN1, SN2 reaction with this. Right? So just keep in mind for now that the hydrogen here is acidic hydrogen. So if you throw a base, we can actually create a nucleophile that can be used further.